explain the different design principles used in an enterprise network. Why do you have to learn this? Because you have to learn how to design intelligent, scalable, compliant, less complex, resilient, and secure networks. Follow the best practices and do not connect hardware just as you feel like it. How many times have you seen these networks where you find switches getting connected one after another and where re re redundancy links exist uh, all over the place? That is a bad network design. Don't do that. That is known as flat network design. Uh, remember that your enterprise network is composed of a campus where you can choose to use a traditional design, a stack-wise design, or SD access design. You have an internet edge where your routers, firewalls, and VPN concentrators that connect your enterprise to the internet live. The service provider edge where your routers that connect your enterprise to um, private carrier uh, network exist. For instance, routers that connect you to the MPLS. You may have a data center, server farm, or remote networks such as branch offices or remote users using VPNs. So the traditional three-tier design for campus network includes a core uh, um, layer that will move packets really fast, a distribution layer that will actually be creating your hierarchical, scalable, and resilient design. This distribution layer will talk layer 3 to the core and layer 2 to the access layer. Your access layer will uh, provide connectivity to your end users and end devices, be it wired or wireless, and you can uh, enforce security here. Uh, so in summary, this design will assi uh, assign a function per layer. It is hierarchical, it avoids a flat network design, and it is good for north and south traffic. That means traffic that goes from the, your users to the internet or your data center, or from your data center and the internet to your end users. So the, the utility of these uh, routers uh, happens when you want to easily, easily add new distribution blocks to your enterprise network. But if your enterprise network is not really that big, you can choose not to have a specific core layer and uh, collapse the core and distribution layer into a single one. So you uh, will be end up you will end up with having two layers only. That is known as the traditional two-tier design. Uh, let's talk about su oversubscription. Oversubscription happens when you need to provide more bandwidth downstream than the bandwidth that you have available upstream. Let's put an example. Let's use for this example Catalyst 9100 that are the new set of Cisco access points. These devices will need 5 gigabit per second ports. So what if we, we want to connect 8 of these access points to your access network? So you will be needed a uh, a total of 40 gigabits per second downstream. It is not really uh, easy to have that uh, the same amount between your access layer and your distribution layer. So you can choose to use Ether channels or you can use the new uh, 25 gigabit per second interfaces in the new set of Cisco devices. Always aim for an oversubscription ratio of 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. But if you have an oversubscription ratio of 10 to 1, you are designing it, it wrong. Uh, so this is the recommended uh, set of boxes for each of your layer layers um, regarding the new uh, Catalyst 9000 series. You can choose to design your campus using the stack-wide design. For instance, this is the distribution stack-wise design. When your distribution switches are put together into a stack using a uh, stack-wise virtual link or SBLs. So in that way, you can start using ether channels between the access layer and the distribution layer so you can get rid of uh, spanning tree protocol. You can also choose to have a stack-wise access in the access layer. So choose the right catalyst depending on how much bandwidth you will want to move across your stack. You can also choose not to use a uh, stack in the access layer. In that case, uh, Cisco recommends you to use a high density port solution such as the Catalyst 9400 modular chassis. Uh, you can also choose to uh, design your campus using the fabric design. What is the fabric? A mesh of connections between network devices, access point switches and routers. And the fabric overlay are virtualized connections that run on top of your physical topology. So you can have your physical topology made of access points, switches, and routers all, to, all connected together. That will be your fabric underlay 
whereas the fabric over there will be tunnels that will be created on the fly automatically in order to communicate and users you can design for cloud in that case you will be providing access to your end users to resources in, by a cloud provider you can use the internet in that case you will be using ipsec tunnels here or you can use uh, carrier based uh, private uh, connections that are faster more reliable than the internet and you can choose to use uh, cisco virtualized routers here if you don't like the default gateways provided by your uh, cloud provider you can use a multi-cloud design for instance you can uh, uh, provide connectivity to azure and aws that will be a multi-cloud design or if you ha still have a data center that is known as an on-premise data center you will be designing a hybrid solution where your data center will be interacting with several cloud providers or one or several one providers as well as your users remember that you can use cloud routers if you don't you like the gateways provided by your uh, cloud providers and these routers can be any uh, of these uh, series of uh, routers if you have on-premise uh, data center uh, on-premise data center you should use the spine and leaf topology these are the spine switches these are your leaf switches notice that you need high density port here ports here because each leaf switch connect to every single spine switch this topology uh, guarantees that if one server wants to communicate to with to another server it will only jump two hops in order to reach it in every single type in any direction so this uh, topology is very good to move traffic between west and east that means traffic between servers in the same data center remember that you will have racks and at the top of each rack there is usually a switch that is known as the top of rack switch that will become your leaf switch and remember that we're given we're using a lot of virtualization nowadays your servers will have virtual switches that will get connected to your leaf switches that's it